Hello, everyone. Welcome to Vanish Chicagoland Stories, the podcast. Uh, this is episode 44, season two. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. We have an interesting show coming up uh, right now. And uh, first off, we're going to go into commercial break. Uh, this program is sponsored by Nestle's Choco Light Candy Bar. And uh, I, I believe a lot of people remember that uh, particular candy bar. So here is a commercial from 1971, 72. Enjoy. Feels like I'm swimming in the foam of a chocolate shake. You've never felt so good about chocolate. Because chocolate never felt as good as chocolate. Feels a lot like a chocolate balloon. Chocolate never felt as good as chocolate. New Nestle's Chocolate Candy Bar, specially whipped up for a new thick chocolate look, a new light and crunchy chocolate feeling. Chocolate never felt as good as chocolate. Okay, I am back. I'm. I hope you enjoyed that uh, commercial. Um, that candy bar was delicious when I was a kid. It was whipped up and, uh, you know, very light, uh, not too heavy. Uh, I wish they'd bring it back, you know, because that was like the, for, you know, the forgotten candies of the 1970s, like, uh, for example, Marathon Bar, which I like that as well. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining me. Today's date is August 3rd, 2021, and uh, I will talk about uh, three things on this particular on this particular episode. Uh, first off, uh, this past Sunday on August 1st was the 40th anniversary of MTV. And uh, MTV is still around, not like what it used to be. I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, but I will talk about uh, my memories of first seeing it. So uh, here we go. Uh, when I was living in Chicago on the Southwest side, uh, we didn't have cable then. Uh, so cable arrived in the city of Chicago in the late 80s, like about 86, 87, around there. So, uh, But the suburbs uh, did receive it earlier. Then uh, one day uh, I visited a friend of my mother's. She lived in Oaklawn. And uh, we went down to the basement and... Uh, and there was the television set, and then I noticed there was a box on it. And I asked uh, my mother's daughter, what is that? And she said, it's a cable box. We got cable. And they go, oh, okay. So uh, what was playing on cable at the moment was MTV. And that was the first time I saw it. And I was uh, mesmerized by that. And then uh, they played uh, videos 24 hours a day. Uh, I don't remember if they played the same ones like every, I don't know, a few hours or so, but I did remember. I don't remember the first video I saw, probably, uh, not sure, not sure what it was. Uh, so, uh, so MTV premiered August 1st, 1981, and then um, you could still watch the first couple hours on YouTube. and. Uh, I have the the lineup of the first videos. I'm not going to read all of them because that would be that would take forever. <laughs> so um, I would just read off the first five. And the first one that aired was "Video Killed the Radio Star" by The Buggles. Uh, "You Better Run" by Pat Benatar. Uh, third one was "She Won't Dance with Me" by Rod Stewart. Uh, number four, "You Better You Bet" by The Who, and Number five was Little Susie's on the Up by PhD. I never heard of this group. But I'm gonna check it out, you know, because I'm it piqued my curiosity. Anyway, uh, so uh, you know, MTV started. Um, like it's, you know, uh, then it got very popular and it caught on, and the eight, 1980s music was phenomenal, very memorable. I love it. You know, and uh, so did a lot of people. Um, like I said before, I didn't get cable until 1986, 1987. Then, then we, then my family got ATV, MTV. Excuse me, that was silly. So um, then there was uh, the VJs, 
you know, they were uh, video dis video uh, like video jockeys. So um, the first people I remember, you know, the first ones that appeared was Mark Goodman, Alan Hunter, JJ Jackson, Nina Blackwood, and Martha Quinn, which I love. She was cute, you know, very, uh, you know, very very nice, lovely lady, and uh, so uh, those guys stood. Uh, they they stood around most of the '80s, but there were others that came over. And uh, the one that just passed away was J.J. Jackson. He passed away about I don't know 15 years ago. You know, it was just sad because he was a nice guy. And then uh, also on MTV, you had <coughs> excuse me singers that appeared. You know, they were promoting. Um, their albums or their videos, you know, and they were interviewed by the VJs, which was fine. You know, they did that. They did promote um, promos for that. And uh, also the, what was it called? The, the slogan, you know, like the promo and they would, you know, remember I want my MTV. Oh, that was uh, that catchphrase is still around. Yeah, still remembered, you know, by everybody, you know, and they showed all kinds of, uh, cele- you know, singers, celebrities. And that was launched in 1982. And it was uh, based on a cereal commercial by Mapo. Remember, I want Mapo. That was from the 1950s. So they got that. You know, I don't know if they, that's a plagiarism thing. I don't think so. And uh, they would, uh, the most memorable video was Money for Nothing. By dire straits and and uh, they always show i want my mtv so that was uh that's a classic it's a classic show you know so that's uh that's fun anyway um so here's some programs they aired during that time when i watched and they also had the MTV top 20 video countdown that was fun uh they also had uh Dal MTV. They also had also Headbangers Ball, which I loved. Oh, you know they played the hard rock, uh, you know heavy metal. You know they mostly it was at night, you know, and or the weekends. I, I used to see that. Then uh, there was uh, Club MTV, Yo MTV Raps with rap music. Okay, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, there was liquid liquid television. I remember that. It was like animation, you know, hardly any music, but they did that. Also, they also did Alternative Nation in the 90s. Also, The Grind, you know. Uh, so they, there were a lot of them. I'm not going to read all of them because they, uh, some didn't last. Some last a long time, you know. Um, they also had uh, Total Request Live with Carson Daly. That was later. You know, I didn't really watch it, but I knew who he was. You know, they also had news shows. They uh, they also had, uh, like for example, Profiles in Rock, This Week in Rock. They had that. Uh, they also had MTV Sports. They did. Uh, they also had uh, Kurt Loder. He was a host, and he did the MTV News. You know, I remember that, which which was interesting. You know, you get informed like that. And then all of a sudden, they went into reality shows, and that went downhill for MTV fans like me and other people. So the first one was called The Real World. That was in from 1992. I, I, I watched it, but yeah, it was okay. It was interesting, but you know, not like with reality shows now, which is like The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Ugh, awful. <laughs> not a fan of those. And then, then they added more and more and more. And then they got Jersey Shore. They got uh, like teenage pregnancy, you know, Teen Mom, all that. It's it's terrible. MTV lost its identity. It's unrecognizable now. Thank goodness they have MTV Classic. They have another uh, channel that started. It was from VH1. You know, VH1 came later, and they played like older videos in the 80s so that was uh it was formerly called uh vh1 classic vh classic now it's mtv classic and it's still there so if you have cable you can uh you watch videos from the old days and it's fun 
to what and it's fun to relive all those great videos and then you saw in the 80s like the artists like uh, prince madonna michael jackson uh all these uh groups like uh i can think of the time i had oh cindy lopper billy billy idol you know oh great uh, duran duran oh they when they got on v uh, on mtv they it took off because of their videos plus they, they were popular with the girls <laughs> i can understand that but they're they're a good group I, I like them i still love their music so uh that's fun so mtv you know that's a shame you know i turned it on one day and it's like ugh, terrible <laughs> okay and uh, right now I'm going to play the origin the introduction of MTV from August 1st 1980, 1981 it's about uh, almost 2 minutes of it so you would have all the v and the the VJs are, uh, are they introduce themselves to the program so here it is the MTV original broadcast from August 1st 1981 enjoy 7 6 5 Four. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. This is it. Welcome to MTV Music Television. The world's first 24-hour stereo video music channel. Now, just moments ago, all of the VJs and the crew here at MTV collectively hit our executive producer, Sue Steinberg, over the head with a bottle of champagne, and behold, a new concept is born. The best of TV combined with the best of radio. Now, starting right now, you'll never look at music the same way again. We'll be right back to introduce the other VJs and the other folks who are going to be with us on MTV. I'm Alan Hunter. I'll be with you right after Mark. We'll be covering the latest in music news coast to coast here on MTV Music Television. I'm Martha Quinn. The music will continue nonstop on MTV Music Television, the newest component of your stereo system. Well, all right. I'm J.J. Jackson. I'll be sitting in with the latest video music performances the way they were meant to be. That's in stereo on MTV Music Television. You'll never look at music the same way again. Hi, I'm Nina Blackwood, and I'll be with you after JJ, right here on MTV, the world's first video music channel, all day, all night, in stereo. Are those guys the best? We all are so excited about this new concept in TV. We'll be doing for TV what FM did for radio, and let's get into it right now at MTV. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the introduction of MTV uh, with that classic uh, image of the astronaut on the moon with the M with the flag that had the logo of MTV, and then you're with that music. <laughs> oh, I love that, you know. And uh, so that'd be all for my memories of MTV. Uh, you can still watch music videos on YouTube. You can you know do a search. You log in. You know, and then uh, do a search of that and find any artists. Basically, usually, you do. So, good. hope you have fun with that. <laughs> I, I certainly do. Anyway, the next thing I would talk about is, uh, it was a post I posted on my social media accounts. It was the Evergreen Theater in Evergreen Park, Illinois. Now, uh, that theater, uh, I believe they tore it down probably in the 90s, late 90s, and uh, but it op Evergreen Plaza opened in 1952, and it was an indoor mall. Uh, then they opened it up, you know, they remodeled it, and it became an indoor mall, probably in the early 60s, something like that. And uh, the theater opened June 26, 1964, and it only had two theaters. Uh, and it was, and it was, Fondly remembered by everyone who lived in the area, like in Evergreen Park, Oak Lawn, uh, Chicago, you know, the Beverly area, you know, Morgan Park. They all uh, went, they attended uh, showings, movies to that theater. And uh, I had a friend of mine I went to school. He worked as an usher there. 
and uh, he told one once a while. Uh, I haven't seen him lately, so he told me a long time ago that he enjoyed the uh, experience of that and uh, oh, the clientele that game went there. <laughs> you know, you you can imagine how many, what kind of people go there and what they do. I'm not going to go into that, but uh, it's not proper for this show. <laughs> so but the, he told me he, had, he enjoyed it. He enjoyed the job over there. It was a great experience. Anyway, so um, I only went to that theater once. And uh, the movie I saw was Grease in 1978 with my brother, my little brother. And he wanted to see the movie. And I said, oh, okay. Uh, It wasn't playing at Fort City Cinema right near my house at the time. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know if it played at the the, uh, Double Drive-In Theater, which was located on Columbus Avenue near Western Avenue by uh, in Chicago. Maybe it did later on the show, but it did premiere at the Evergreen Theater, you know, because I like, I like John Travolta and I love Olivia newton John because she has a beautiful singing voice and uh, it looked like a lot of fun. So one day we went there and uh, we watched the movie and I loved it. And you're, it's not like a cult classic now, where you, right now they show the movie in theaters. They did that a few years ago where you do a sing-along. You know, they had the bouncy ball, like the old Mitch Miller's show from the 60s. Some people remember that. <laughs> I know I know it from information, but I do remember the show. Uh, anyway, so it's a cultural phenomenon, that, mu- that movie of Greece, you know, with the songs, uh, the scenes, you know, it's like the next Wizard of Oz. Like you remember this, the dialogue and uh, of each character, what they said. And uh, when my brother and I watched the movie at the Evergreen Theater, it was, uh, it was a big hit. We loved it. You know, I later on, I bought it on video, on DVD. I still have it. I still enjoy it. It's still a fun place. And uh, when I posted that photo, a lot of people remembered what movies they saw. And the, during the 60s and 70s and the 80s, you know. Uh, then, um, unfortunately, the, the manager of the theater got uh, murdered. There was a robbery. It happened in 1973. And that's a. And I read about that article. And that's a shame, a terrible shame that happened. But uh, the the robbers got caught eventually. Thank goodness. And uh, the man had two children and a wife. You know, it was horrible. And uh, you know, it, there was you know a lot of crime around the mall. You know, a lot of robberies and all that, and a lot of disturbances. So uh, the mall closed in 2013 i think and they tore it down and now they uh they're rebuilding it as an outdoor mall but not not like a mall like a big shopping center i haven't seen it i haven't passed by it lately i will one day just to take a look at it because the only uh department store was there was carson's carson perry scott excuse me carson perry scott (laughs) tongue-tied and uh that was, you know, that that closed about you know, about a couple of years ago, and uh, you know that was that, you know. So uh, a lot of people miss that store. I miss it too. So uh, the Ever- Evergreen Theater had a lot of memories for a lot of people that lived in that area and still do, you know. And uh, that was my experience at, at the theater. Okay. Next thing I will talk about is it's a product that's still around, but it's changed somewhat. And that is Sara Lee, you know, bakery. Uh, it used to be called the Sara Lee Corporation uh, back then, but it's changed somewhat. And uh, I, don't, I forget what they call it. I think they call it uh, Sara Lee Frozen Bakery. That's what they call it now, but it's split up. Around uh, around uh, 2012, but it's not an independent company. So uh, Sara Lee was founded in 1939, and uh, it was from Chicago. You know, it was from, and uh, the person's name was Nathan Cummings. He was a businessman, and he uh, he he got the uh, 
company rolling and uh what is well known about uh they bought a, another company called the kitchens of sara lee and that was uh it was a small, small chain of bakeries and then they uh they had their famous products you know the famous ones coffee cake pound cake which i love Oof. and uh they had a bakery in deerfield illinois that was uh that cranked out all those beautiful cakes and uh from what i understand on social media people remember the smell of it when they live by it reminds me of the nabisco company on the southwest side where i used to work and they, they used to smell the 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 cookies being baked you know and uh the same thing applied to the sara lee uh factory in deerfield illinois i closed in 1990 and then uh the, but there were other bakeries in the united states so they're still in operation but uh i don't know about here maybe i don't know uh, their headquarters, they moved to Donner's Grove, and then that closed around you know, a couple of years ago, and now it's in Oak Brook Terrace, and, uh, but it's not the same, not the same at all. Anyway, so I posted uh, a photo from the newspaper, and it was an ad, and they showed these uh, cakes from, this was from the Chicago Tribune, July 28th, 1971. And uh, there was a display of the wonderful cakes they had. So when I posted this uh, photo of it on my Facebook page, Van Chicago Land, a lot of the, the comments came rolling, and they were like fast and furious. And they go, "Oh, we love this one, we love that one." So I'll I'm going to read the cakes that I display. Uh, there were nine of them. Uh, there was golden cake, German chocolate cake, coconut cake, double sweet cake, fresh banana, fresh orange chocolate cake which was his favorite spice cake i love and brownies and believe it or not the most popular flavor that people loved was banana you know i don't remember i never had the banana one i'm sure you could uh not crazy about banana cake i like banana bread or banana cake or banana cream pie but they loved the banana one and uh orange cake they like you could they, I don't think they make it anymore. They don't make it anymore because they've changed. Uh, but my favorite was chocolate cake. And that one, I remember the first time I had it was uh, when I was very little. We lived in the Roseland area, uh, Roseland neighborhood in Southside. And there was a department store called Gately's People Store. And they had a grocery store in the, bo in the basement. And my mom used to buy the Sara Lee chocolate cake. And she, when she brought it home... You know, couldn't I couldn't wait to eat it, you know. And then when she served it, you know, I did the silly thing like most kids do. I used to eat the frosting first and eat the cake. <laughs> I didn't eat it together. I do I do that as an adult uh, right now. So um, so I do I do that, and the cakes were wonderful. That cake was good. I loved it. Anyway, so uh, so I remember the slogan: Nobody does it like a bed or. or Nobody does it like Sara Lee. You know, remember that jingle? You can find it on YouTube. You can find that. Anyway, Sara Lee, st they still make the cakes, but it's not the same anymore. I remember they had outlet stores. There was one near my house, and their coffee cakes were wonderful. Oof. Loved it. Pound cake, mm, you gain weight just looking at it. Anyway, um, so that'll be all for today for episode 44. Uh I'm glad you could join me. Um, sorry, I'm rambling a little bit. You know, I still get nervous talking about it. I want to mention a couple of things. One last episode, last podcast episode I did for is to tribute to Ron Popeil and his uh, amazing products for Ronco. I forgot to mention the vacuum, uh, the record vacuum. That was when they you insert a record, thirty-three and a third, seventy-eight, forty-five, and they clean your record. And that was a very popular product. You know, you can find the commercial on YouTube. Also, they did, uh, Saturday Night Live did a parody on Ron Peel and his products. And, of course, it was Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> and he did the Bassomatic, which is hilarious. He also did Batomatic, where you, in, instead of a bass in the blender, you put a bat. And he did that. <laughs> That's not really well known. But the Bassomatic is uh, a classic. And it's still remembered by people today. Okay. So that'll be all today. 
And uh, I hope I you can join me for my next episode. Uh, it will be episode 45, hopefully this weekend. And uh, this is Pico Stan signing off for Van Chicago Land Stories. You can uh, check out my latest episode on my social media accounts, on my on my blog, Van Chicago Land blog, on my Facebook page, Van Chicago Land. I'm on Twitter. You can also uh, find the episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Breaker. I think that's what it's called, and Stitcher. So you can find uh, also on YouTube. I would upload those very soon, and you can have access. So, thank you very much for joining me, and I, I bye bye now for me. And now here is Ray Rainer saying bye bye for now. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. We have to go. Bye bye bye. Thank you.